नमस्कार एंड वेलकम टू स्टार्टअप चैंपियंस दिस इज द स्टेज दैट सेलिब्रेट्स द स्टार्टअप टैलेंट ऑफ द कंट्री आई एम शुभेंदु घोष नाउ दिस से यू नो एज अ मेजर ऑफ सक्सेस स्काई इज द लिमिट बट फॉर सम स्काई इज जस्ट द पॉइंट ऑफ बिगिनिंग टुडे वी हैव विद अस शाइनिंग स्टार्स फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ द स्पेस सेक्टर इन पर्टिकुलर नाउ इंडिया वी नो इज अ लीडिंग स्पेस फेयरिंग नेशन इन द वर्ल्ड सो फार the achievement the space mission has been synonymous with isro but with the rise of startups it has added a new diversity to the ecosystem it has made it more competitive and more exciting and the startups who are joining us today have made a name for themselves in the country and throughout the world allow me to introduce the startups who are joining us uh, first we have with us skyroot aerospace uh, pavan chandana welcome pavan to the program you're from hyderabad Uh, our second startup of the day is uh, Dhruva Space, uh, also Hi. Hyderabad based. Uh, with us is Sanjay Nekanti. Welcome, Sanjay, to the program. And our third uh, startup is based in Bangalore, uh, Bellatrix Aerospace. Uh, with us is Yashash. Welcome, Yashash, to the program. And uh, we also are joined by a young, enthusiastic audience. There are students, some science students, uh, some budding entrepreneurs, and we see their products in front of us as well. A big hand of applause. Uh, for all of you thank you very much and i hope uh, you will engage in the program going forward and now the very special and important part what is a startup what is a conversation about startup without talking about the mentor figure whether talking about the guide a very special guest is joining us in the program today chairman isro dr k sivan is joining us as a mentor uh, welcome uh, dr sivan for joining us thank you very much uh, and it's an exciting moment and let me also tell you that sir uh, this seems to be an extended isro family because a lot of startups have members who have previously worked in isro some of them are professionally engaging with isro so very warm welcome to you sir we'll keep connecting you uh, with you in the course of the program so as we begin this journey let us reflect upon how significant the startup ecosystem has been in the space sector how have avenues and opportunities opened up especially in the recent years especially uh, last year when Uh, the historic reform was introduced to open up the sector for private players here's the story हाल में करीब करीब हर सेक्टर जो बड़े रिफॉर्म्स किए गए उनके पीछे भी यही एक सोच है पहली बार स्पेस सेक्टर में प्राइवेट इन्वेस्टमेंट के रास्ते खुले करीब करीब सारे रिस्ट्रिक्शन हटा दिए एक प्रकार से सरकार अब की मौजूदगी महसूस नहीं हर एक पर भरोसा किया गया India space program started in the 60s and today it has grown manifold and set an example for the world despite the hurdles and challenges the space ecosystem touches our lives in diverse ways from direct to home tv channels to mobile connectivity from finding directions on navigation maps to weather updates advances in space science and tech has transformed our lives now the space sector is all set to be powered by the vision and innovation of startups in 2019 isro made history by launching a satellite made by a student from tamil nadu kalam sat the world's lightest and smallest satellite The small wonder used the technique of 3D printing in the space for the first time. A satellite of the weight of a mobile phone was made by Rifat and his six friends studying in class 12. Today, several startups are exploring the infinite potential of the space sector in India. This has been made possible by the timely interventions by the government. Reforms in the space sector, promoting ease of doing business, supporting testing facilities, providing launch pads for satellites, public private partnership in research in june 2020 it was decided to open up the space sector for private enterprises it was decided to form the indian national space promotion and authorization center or in space the regulator will ensure level playing field for government private sector and startups in the sector the regulator will ensure space technology is not misused after this there was a flood of exciting proposals from the private sector from small satellites to the rockets that carry them from rocket launch pad to the ground station companies in this sector also put forth their expectations there were no longer vendors but partners in projects the government is streamlining the policies in this sector with focus on navigation remote sensing and space exploration the 
ground is ready for takeoff a new light for the space sector in india startups and private entrepreneurs are welcome to join this exciting adventure of infinite possibilities Right there. So great potential, great opportunities opening up for the startups. Uh, now, before we uh, start our conversation with the startups today, if we can have our mentor, uh, Dr. Uh, K. Sivan, back uh, on the mentor wall. Uh, Dr. Sivan, uh, uh, we just uh, saw the story talking about how the opportunities uh, are opening up for the startups. Uh, from you, we'd like to learn what kind of uh, freshness, fresh energy, potential do the startups bring to the sector? First of all, let me welcome the Indian startups for coming forward to carry out the space activities. The space reform initiated by the government of India is an excellent and a timely initiative. According to my opinion, this initiative is a special. I'll explain why. Till now, the space activities, as you mentioned, were carried out by ISRO. The activities include building launch vehicles, spacecraft, and launching them. establishing ground system acquiring data providing and many more all these were done by itso the involvement of government of india was due to the fact that the space activity involves development of cutting edge technology which was not available anywhere it is essential that these technologies had to be developed indigenously and itso has done it now India is in the forefront to provide the space based services to the common man of the country indigenously now it is heartening to note that the startups are gearing up to carry out these activities which was otherwise was being done by isro before taking up that activities we need to address the issues which will be useful for the startups to focus in the right direction now what are the issues the high end technology development involves huge investment and costly facilities along with this the high reliability of the space system involves very high cost therefore to overcome the stated issues my advice to the startup is please don't go along with the conventional mode you need to develop disruptive technologies innovative strategies lateral thinking please disrupt the conventional mode Right. please don't ignore crazy ideas it may give you a direction you may have a simple cost effective solution right in front of you please come forward and bring out these ideas this applies to all the areas of space activities if you succeed right i'm sure you will be the first in the world please make use of this opportunity please don't uh, miss it wonderful and, uh, sir for example uh, right uh, how space x is successful and disruptive they use a single engine while most of the other people are using multiple engine for example psl uses about 30 propulsion units but they reuse them this is not the end like this in the entire space sector there are a number of activities which have potential opportunities to innovate and make the system equal to a other terrestrial system but please don't follow elon musk or isro you have to come out with original ideas that will change the world and make the india a technology powerhouse that's what i wanted to suggest great a round of applause thank you very much for that opening message uh, dr sivan uh, we'll keep connecting with you uh, but let's take the program uh, forward uh, for now uh, so let's talk about our first startup uh, skyroot uh, aerospace now they make rockets or launch uh, vehicles uh, you know if you go to their website they say they seek to democratize space uh, in a manner to make uh, space missions uh, uh, more affordable uh, for people now they're a two year old company however uh, if you look at their team uh, the senior scientists uh, and technicians from uh, isro in fact uh, their rocket uh, their very own rocket is set to uh, launch uh, sometime later in 2021 uh, let's look at the story first A new space age is dawning in India. Three, two, one, zero. For long, humans wanted to conquer the boundaries of space, or even set up colonies in Moon or maybe even Mars. 
sounds far fetched right well not if two young hyderabadi friends are to be believed meet two former isro scientists pavan kumar chandana and naga bharat dhaka and their space extreme from its formative years to the present scenario where the country is spending and sending mission to the mars the country is now entering a new space age and leading the bandwagon and leading the charge is two former isro scientists who have started skyroot aerospace this is their story a two year old company which wants to script history skyroot aerospace is in a tearing hurry it wants to launch its first rocket by december 2021 no parents would agree for their uh, son or daughter to start a company the that too after having a very stable job at the government you know being very well respected in fact they're proud that my son is an isro scientist you know it's uh, very difficult to you know make them convinced etc so at that time i thought the best idea would be just resign and tell them you know it was a little bit difficult initially but now is like all good and they all are proud that you know with skyroot <laughs> we are doing a great journey we've got seed funded by mr mukesh bansal who is a serial entrepreneur and a, a, a well known name in the e-commerce e industry in india that way we have secured a, a 10.3 crore initial seed investment from him the global space market is valued at around 360 billion dollars and is expected to become thrice this size by 2040 according to morgan stanley india's current share in the global space market is just 7 billion dollar which is 2% two of india's best startups through our space and skyroot aerospace have joined hands we are inspired by the great indian scientists and in fact we wanted to name our rocket engines after great indian scientists which we are all proud of you know uh, so that way like our first engine is raman engine we test fired it uh, successfully it's a, a liquid rocket engine where the propellants are in liquid form so that way like uh, that engine has a 3d printed component which is first time in india a 3d printed injector successfully fired 2020 certainly going to be remembered as a, a, a huge transformative year for space sector in india the key uh, measures taken by government uh, to li liberalize and allow commercial private players uh, to operate in space domain is going to be a huge boon for indian space sector and economy in general skyroot is now working on putting its first launch vehicle vikram 1 into space by december 2021 the startup is currently developing three rockets of vikram series skyroot team also designed india's first 100% 3d printed bipropellant liquid rocket engine injector that helped reduce its overall mass by 50% and total number of components and lead time by 80% it also successfully test fired solid propulsion rocket stage named kalam 5 eventually we want to uh, uh, parallelly develop a fully reusable vehicle uh, over the next 5 years Indian space industry is still in the nascent stage but the small steps taken by Skyroot has the potential to turn into a giant step not just for mankind but also for the country Tapush Patacharya's report So that is uh, Skyroot Aerospace for you ladies and gentlemen and Pavan Chandana founder uh, is here with us uh, Pavan uh, the point where you really came into the voice over where you say uh, your parents were concerned about you switching from isro how did that happen people really spend their lifetimes finding a career in isro and you decided to move on from there how did that idea come to you yeah so basically my time time at isro was beautiful you know in fact like i enjoyed my job very much i was deeply appreciated and i was having great time working with cutting edge technologies on cutting edge projects there Uh, so but i always wanted to do something more you know so i wanted to do something more for the country uh, and i was really inspired by dr vikram sarabhai you know who started isro you know his right. sta his startup was isro what right. it is today uh, and also like uh, i've been following the international uh, space domain itself and there are like a lot of inspirational stories which is coming out uh, mm -hmm. happening all around the world so that inspired me to take that step you know wanted to start a really great uh, you know space company out of india which all we all indians will be proud of in the future you know so with that thought and with that inspiration uh, right. you know started skyroot aerospace 
Yes. Right. And uh, how did your your parents, your family take this decision? Yeah. So in fact, uh, they were a little bit uh, you know surprised first, and also they were also sad uh, so, that uh, in fact they keep telling everybody you know my son is an ISRO scientist, uh, etc. So and suddenly you know uh, I took a call to come out of ISRO and start a company. So it was a little bit tough in the initial phases for them, uh, but later on you know so it, they all accepted it, and uh, you know so Skyroot is doing good, so they're also happy. Wonderful. Uh, let's connect to uh, our mentor, Dr. K. Sivan. Uh, uh, Dr. Sivan, if uh, we can have you on the mentor wall. Uh, sir, you just uh, saw the story of uh, uh, Skyroot. Uh, uh, now, they say India has about 2% of the global space market. When you see companies like uh, Skyroot uh, making big strides, uh, what do you think is the road ahead, sir? What opportunities in particular lie ahead for startups like Skyroot and others? Uh, definitely, that is, they have a very good opportunity. Why I am telling is this hmm. uh, uh, that uh, now that uh, the spacecraft systems now become smaller and smaller. Now uh, we are using the bigger rockets to launch, and uh, when you are making use of the bigger rocket, so definitely the cost of the launching is very high, and the smaller rocket means the launching cost will come down. So what I feel is that is that they have taken the right step of uh, uh, making a small rocket, which will be very cost effective. Also, that is that our future, all the satellites are of 150 or 200 kg class. Right. And, uh, and definitely they will have a very good opportunity to capture the market, not only in India, but globally also. And uh, I am very happy to declare that I'm, I am uh, I want them to come and make use of our facility to test their engines and their rocket. Also, that I will uh, invite them to launch from our spaceport, our right. startup. Indian startup should launch the rocket from Indian side. And that's not only that uh, our Shah. I am creating a, a spaceport near the southern tip of India, which will be very useful for them. And uh, definitely that uh, our Indian is making a very good ecosystem for them to, to do that business. And they are going to have a very good business, I'm very sure, this one. And it's so going to be a sort of homecoming, sir. Uh, Skyroot founders uh, have been in ISRO earlier, so it's going to be a homecoming when they uh, join hands once again. Uh, Baban, would you like to uh, ask something from the from the mentor? Anything yeah. that so first of all, it's great to see you, sir. Uh, and also, like in fact, uh, like you said, we have already been in touch for you know utilizing ISRO's facilities. Uh, we have uh, been getting great support from you and team. Uh, and in fact, like uh, soon we're going to come uh, come forward to uh, first test firing uh, at ISRO's facility. And definitely, you know, we want to launch from India, and we want to take ISRO's support. And it'll be good to come back to Sri Aurobindo. In fact, I used to work a lot of time on the launch pads, uh, wow. so it's uh, really homecoming, like you said. Uh, so look forward to you know uh, you know collaborate with ISRO and you know take India to the next step. Thank you, sir. Right. Great. Uh, Dr. Simon, we'll connect with you again in in just a bit. Uh, uh, Paman, just to understand. Uh, uh, the work that you do. So you make uh, relatively cheaper and affordable rockets in order to make access to space uh, easier. Would you say that? Exactly. So basically, you know, previously, you know, there used to be very large size satellites, you know, hmm. bus size of uh, satellites sure. used to be there. Uh, but now, you know, with the advancements in satellite technology. And therefore, bigger rockets. Bigger satellite means yes, bigger rockets. bigger today. rockets. Naturally, you know, all the governments, you know, they launch very huge, uh, uh, you know, size of rockets. And now, uh, uh, the technology has advanced now and satellites are becoming smaller. And also, the trend is to put a constellation of satellites. You know, instead of putting one single satellite, okay. you put hundreds and thousand number of satellites so that you can increase the coverage. You know, you can click more images from space, you know, at a, at a, at a large number of uh, time points uh, in a particular day. So that way, like, uh, the technology has shifted to smaller satellites, and they need, like, specific, uh, you know, rockets to launch them to different, different orbits they want. Mm -hmm. right? It's more like, you know, instead of uh, converting a train to a Uber, you know, it's more like Uber right. to get into space. You know, you go right. to space wherever you want in a very short period of time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. And if I can turn to the audience, uh, the questions that you may have, uh, you want to begin? Hi, hi founders. Uh, it's a great inspiration. You are my inspiration to start my startup itself. Um, my startup is Vcross, Vcross Robotics. My vision was to launch drones into Mars, actually. That's the vision that I started. So we came up with an indigenous uh, computer vision based autopilot that enables drones to be autonomous. And uh, it's no uh, difference that uh, space is the one uh, or the GPS or whatever technologies are right now available are the one that has driven our innovation. And I'm very thank you or thankful for you to 
coming into this direction and bringing innovation Amazing. and my question for yeah for <laughs> it's a fan moment sorry so uh, my question to you all is that around the world india is known as a software capital of world and you are bringing a behavioral change behavioral change by bringing hardware into india so two two three comments from each of you on uh, how india is going to be a hardware capital of world we'll take it from pavan and then we'll come to the other guest uh, yeah, eventually sure. for pavan uh, so uh, so in fact uh, you know first i should uh, congratulate him for the vision and the kind of startup you're building so all the best to you uh, so to come to the question uh, so basically uh, any uh, kind of uh, startup in india you know so mostly it's all soft software companies uh, you know which were thriving uh, but when it comes to space sector in fact uh, you know I'm, as subandhi told we are like one of the leading players in the world and we do like really good uh, space hardware already in the country and thanks to isro you know we have a very good ecosystem for hardware in india uh, so this transition is little bit it'll take some time you know even for the investors to just convince get convinced of this hardware ecosystem but in space we're doing really good and uh, you know we have a really good ecosystem already uh, in place uh, right so but it'll take some time for uh, you know india to get adjusted when it comes to you know the uh, the startup ecosystem and the you know investor ecosystem to accept hardware startups but of course it will be a long haul you know as space and aerospace are a, always a long haul uh, so all the best to you and definitely there is great uh, you know uh, opportunities ahead especially in hardware in india and i believe you know next uh, uh, transition is going to be from software to hardware in india and let's lead that game yeah. right uh, and, and pavan uh, one more question if you can take from the audience pam so uh, my question to you is we have watched the movie mission mangal in that due to uh, due to low budget or due to insufficient uh, insufficient of money they couldn't make it they uh, they face problem so is this uh, the reason you inspire to make five time more cheaper satellites and everything yeah so basically you know we build rockets uh, you know to start with not satellites uh, and then like i don't think there is any issue with the mission mangal as well you know so they are like very well they have done really good and also the funding was also relatively good so our objective is to you know take it global you know and in today in india you know whatever launch uh, services we do it's less than 1% of the international market demand so it's it's our uh, you know job to expand the pie you know of course with the help from isro you know all the experts there uh, so we want to expand the pie and make much cheaper rockets uh, for the world to take with in fact like you know as i mentioned before like we are building uh, a system you know the budget of our uh, program to go to the first launch is like right. five times lesser than any other international company right so with that like we want to take uh, you know rockets global from india uh, with a very cost effective solution for the world absolutely and if you can take a perspective from uh, dr sivan uh, Uh, sir if you can connect with you now uh, each time we talk about uh, progress in space sciences and space missions in india uh, one word that comes up very frequently is affordability in being cost effective that also happens to be the strength of uh, isro and indian missions uh, help us understand sir in in the in the world of uh, space missions uh, how significant is it to make uh, uh, our launches or uh, rockets or satellites more cost effective and affordable how why is that aspect so crucial in here now uh, basically that is they are saying that uh, our uh, the technologies as uh, isro technologies uh, globally is accepted for uh, low cost and uh, that we have got uh, that uh, that uh, very good market because of this low cost access to space by our psld mm -hmm. and uh, psl is very cost effective vehicle but now the situation is that is now the psl is not a only vehicle there are competitors come globally which is either equal to psl b or even even better than psl b cost so definitely there is a necessity or a requirement that we have to bring the cost of launch further down i am sure that pavan uh, will have a good very good ideas and uh, uh, that uh, we will we will also help him to implement so that we have if you are bringing down the cost uh, much less definitely that he is going to capture the, the global market and uh, this is required it is a need of the hour right now right sir there thank you uh, for joining us for that input uh, we'll keep connecting with you sir as we move forward in this discussion um, uh, pavan final uh, thoughts on uh, you know as inspiring as it is to see a rocket uh, a tear through the sky uh, it is also heartbreaking when we see rockets crash uh, as a startup company what is your backup plan uh, how prepared are you as a as a startup uh, to also embrace failure if that happens 
We hope it doesn't, but if it happens. Yeah. So basically, embracing failure is part and parcel of startup life. You know. So we, sure. in fact, uh, we thrive on failures. Uh, in fact, we get, we fail, we you know fall down, and we you know lift back again yes. and get going. Right. So failure is a part of uh, you know mm. startup life, and that's how we innovate faster. You know, we fail fast and we innovate faster. So that way, like uh, you know, we accept failure even if it comes and take uh, you know see that what uh, how we can come back very quickly. Mm. And when it comes to rockets, you know they are well known for crashing. You know, as you know, yes. uh, the famous uh, uh, SpaceX. Uh, right, the first three rockets failed. You know, if the fourth launch failed, you know they would have uh, the company would have been closed. You know, mm. so but then uh, now it's the largest space company in the world, right? So so it's like the failure is part and parcel of a rocket company. But does it get tricky with investors in particular if no. uh, uh, crashes as yeah. Not. So so basically, space is not uh, for every investor. You know, so it's like a long haul and it uh, needs a lot of vision to invest in space sector. Uh, and all the investors, uh, especially you know, investing in rocket companies, they are actually prepared for such fa uh, failures if, if they come through because it's part and it's, it's risky. You know, rockets are risky, and right. uh, in fact, like uh, every rocket has more than 100 systems. Even if a bolt fails, a rocket fails, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's not easy to build sure. uh, 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 rockets. But of course, you know, we have like a system in place uh, which uh, can look after quality. You know, in depth. You know, we take several reviews. We do a lot of testing to avoid the failure, and we want to see that you know our rocket succeeds in the first attempt itself. Right. And, and, and great our best wishes, of course, for the rocket uh, that you're planning to launch in 2021. It's in time now to meet our second startup of the day, Dhruva Space. They're engaged in making smaller satellites for the commercial markets. They also make satellite deployers and also ground stations. So in a way, end-to-end -end solution for space missions. They started in way back 2012 and they were one of the first uh, private space tech company in India. Let's take a look at their story. India's liberalization in the space sector has turned out to be a big hit with the entrepreneurs in this sector, leading to an influx of foreign and homegrown startups vying for a slice of the pie of the billion dollar space industry. From the fabled city of Hyderabad comes India's best space startup, who are leading a silent revolution in India's space sector. Space. One of the first private space technology company in the country. Started in 2012, it found it hard to sustain operations without any external funding in its initial days. Raising capital has not been easy. Initially, we did pull in close to uh, 30 lakhs uh, just to get things rolling and uh, we've raised a 4.5 crores uh, at uh, 20 crore uh, pre-money valuation. In 2018, became the first company without any European co-founders to be accepted by a European Space Agency business incubator. Four founders headed by CEO Sanjay, Chaitanya Tora, Abhay, and Krishna Teja came on board for its second stint and the rest is history. The idea behind this is that uh, uh, these bus systems can be integrated with uh, a payload from uh, any of our customers uh, in, and then launched into orbit. So in the space segment, so we have these uh, bus structures that are modular and configurable ranging all the way from 0.5U to up to uh, 30 centimeter cube uh, platforms. Dhruva is also actively engaging with ISRO for launching satellites on its launch vehicle. The firm is now planning to build a fleet of satellites and a distributed network of ground station which are used to communicate with satellites that are in the orbit. I mean the policies are shaping up, uh, we, are in a, we, are in a, we are going in the right direction. There is still a lot more work to be done both by the industry as well as the government as well as ISRO and the related parties. Uh, but eventually it will open up doors for a lot of people uh, once the whole thing is set up. The company has taken forward Prime Minister Modi's Make in India, Make for the World Mantra and is now planning to go global with its product. There's been a lot of initiatives from uh, ISRO, NSIL, Antrix and uh, InSpace now to uh, provide us enough support for the private industries. 
the ecosystem was really well established and now I think we are in the right time where we can use the ecosystem as well as the policies which will help us to uh, build stuff in India and then uh, deploy all, all over the world. Besides US, India is one of the most attractive destinations to pursue a career in the new space sector given the availability of high quality university programs along with a robust business ecosystem. Crank Technologies partnership with Dhruv has been nothing short of exceptional. Our combined expertise has allowed us to provide top tier services throughout the space industry and Dhruva has provided a vital role in our international developments and we look forward to our continued partnership. The story of Dhruva showcases India's growing prowess in the new space age where it has positioned itself to be a global giant in the space sector in coming years. So that's uh, Dhruva Space for you. A big round of applause uh, if you can have for them, for the journey. And one of the founders, Sanjay uh, Nekanti, is with us. Sanjay, I've been very curious about uh, that box that you have next to you. It's a satellite, is it? Uh, over the years, uh, the size of the satellites has uh, really shrunk. Uh, you know, uh, when you talk about satellites, one would imagine that, you know, the satellite is uh, a size of a small school bus uh, or an True. SUV. But, uh, you know, today uh, satellites are the size of a small tiffin box or mm. the size of a washing machine. And uh, uh, it is estimated that over uh, 20,000 small satellites will be launched in the coming 10 to 15 years. And uh, what we do is, uh, uh, you know, we build these small deployers uh, yes. that go on to the rocket. Uh, like we work, we are working very closely with ISRO to fly this on the PSLV. We are also working very closely with my friend here, Pavan from right. Skyroot, right. where uh, you know we could launch, sat uh, put satellites for our customers. So you are partners in the in the space programs and missions. Yes, yes. yes. So what this does is uh, this sits on the rocket, and uh, when the rocket reaches the uh, intended uh, altitude, uh, there's a command uh, sent to this particular box. Okay. And uh, you know then. The door wow. opens and the satellites so are ejected. So in this ejected. space, those, uh, those satellites, if they are uh, small satellites, they'll fall and they'll fall into the orbits. That yes, so? that's right. Oh, so uh, on uh, here, because there is gravity, you know, they just fell right. this way. But, you know, uh, in space where there's vacuum, you know, uh, these are, they separate by themselves. So that's fascinating to see a live demonstration of that. Uh, but, but tell me, uh, Sanjay, we were looking at your story. You started... Uh, uh, way back about 10 years ago, uh, 2012, and we also learned that the initial time of funding or finding an investor was a challenging time. Uh, uh, how was that moment and how have things changed? There's so much focus on startups now, uh, so if you could briefly tell us about your journey in that manner. Yeah, so uh, when we started the company in 2012, uh, you know, there, there were hardly any companies that were talking about building satellites. Right. And uh, when we told, uh, you know, a lot of our customers who were within India and also outside of India that hmm. we could build a, a full satellite and launch it for them and do it at a fraction of a cost. Uh, you know, not many people believed in that idea. The reason was, uh, you know, the market was, uh, you know, probably SpaceX was not as successful as it is today. And, you know, not many people knew how uh, space uh, industry was evolving. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that, uh, that, that had been a very big bottleneck for us to raise capital. So whenever we uh, had conversations with investors, uh, they would not believe that, you know, a 24-year-old can actually build a uh, satellite company. And that became your USP, making affordable products, affordable satellite launches became your USP. Yes, so so that, that's that been our goal and, sure. you know, we've been uh, sticking to the same framework hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, we ran the company until 2015 and then uh, put it on a pause uh, for a while and restarted our operations and you know uh, because of the slew of measures taken by the government over the last couple of years yeah. uh, we were also able to raise our first round of capital and uh, it was not easy either right like I, I met probably around 200 investors and 30 of them were convinced that you know uh, okay. we could do something mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all right and uh, Sanjay, uh, we'll now hear from somebody who seems to know the team very well. In fact, two people. So let's listen into uh, two very special people who talk about the team. Can we have the visuals? Krishna Teja is, I think, one of the most disciplined and structured people that I've known. Chaitanya Dora, he's our party person in our group. 
बट ही इज़ वेरी गुड विथ नेम्बर्स एंड एक्सट्रीमली परसिस्टेंट इन टर्म्स ऑफ यू नो इन्श्योरिंग दैट द वर्क इज डन संजय आई थिंक ही इज extremely extremely passionate and energetic he brings energy to this group abhay i think he is very independent very reliable uh, if you give him something you can close your eyes and think that this is done i mean i am learning from him how to you know maintain that work life balance so yeah pretty good i think he he's he's better than me in managing that it seems like a group of friends just came together and saw a dream we will talk about that aspect but if you can connect uh, with our mentor uh, dr sivan once again uh, dr sivan uh, moments ago uh, uh, we were talking about the issue of funding uh, dhruva space started in 2012 perhaps when the opportunities of uh, finding investors and funding were, uh, were not very easy how has the scene changed sir uh, today a new startup looking for funding looking for support from investors uh uh if you could give us a bigger picture how have, how have things changed in the recent years now uh, regarding the uh, uh, the uh, funding there is i wanted to tell one thing one is that uh, now this uh, i i must congratulate and compliment uh, dhruva that uh, founder really they have done a wonderful job now that uh, because of that advancement in technology this uh, satellites are shrinking and that will make the whole thing in the smaller uh, the cost i mean the, the cost of the satellite is very less so there is a one very good approach they are following so it's a one of the disruptions we are looking for is so I, i must compliment him to bring out these technologies and definitely that is uh, when uh, we are uh, that uh, the, uh, the doing that uh, the development of such technologies we need a lot of funding is required and uh, isro is really isro or government of india is uh, trying to help them in an indirect way right. they can really i can i can offer him to make use of our facilities almost uh, free of cost that way it will be a very good uh, saving for him and uh, then also that the, the technology sort of required also we can uh, provide him this way this is the one of the ways of uh, helping them to reduce that uh, their expenditure and uh, their uh, the overhead that is a one way and another uh, way of uh, doing this now yeah, just now we had I mean, some few weeks back we had interaction with the national security advisor and now this all this uh, the companies they are trying to form uh, society Mm -hmm. and uh, so definitely through that society that uh, we can always uh, look for some investment and at the same time definitely we can reduce the burden on them by offering our facility and testing that we already they, they approached us and he is aware and uh, definitely we'll help on them on this matter dr sivan you turning out to be the best mentor uh, than startups uh, in the space sector can ask for what would you say sanjay uh sir i would i would really like to thank you for uh all the measures that you have taken in the last couple of years uh it's been uh, the amount of support that has been extended by isro has been outstanding uh we are already seeing a lot of interest from uh, our prospective customers outside of india uh who are looking to uh you know look at india providing them satellite solutions uh i'm also very happy to bring to your attention that you know uh the vikram sarabhai space center team has been uh, very very supportive in fact this this particular uh, deployer uh, they have been extending a lot of support and there's a possibility that uh, you know this would fly on the pslv in february wow. uh so uh, sir i i would like to uh, uh, also take this opportunity to tell you that uh, uh, a few of our customers are interested in uh, utilizing the ground station network of isro uh, we would we would uh, like to approach you to uh, utilize the indian uh, ground station network and uh, uh, give that access to a lot of international players around the world thanks a lot sir Great. thank you and uh, we will be very happy to give you support don't uh, don't worry you come at any time and uh, that, uh, if you have any problem there you please uh, contact me directly thank you and, sir uh, your problem problem will be solved within 5 minutes 
Great, great, Dr. Sivan. You've just uh, really made this program uh, really wonderful. Please do stay with us. There is another uh, startup that we have to cover. Uh, before that, we have a question coming in uh, from our audience member here. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Sahil, Assistant Professor from Trinidad Dwarka. Uh, actually, uh, you have just said that uh, in coming uh, 15 or 10 years, uh, we'll be launching uh, 20,000 satellites globally. So we have talked about uh, you know, uh, using less fuel, um, making that satellites uh, in very smaller size. We have not talked about space debris. So is there any technology or any startup working on that or can we uh, work on that also? Because that is also an issue to our ecosystem. Sure. Uh, that's a very, very interesting point. Uh, we at Dhruva Space are very responsible with respect to the type of missions that we uh, that we fly. So we try to have, uh, you know, uh, we are we, we have not just we have not yet implemented it. We are, but we are in the process of uh, implementing a debris, uh, you know, uh, active reentry uh, modules, uh, so that you know uh, after the life of the satellite is over. Uh, the space system would, the satellite would re-enter and burn out uh, during re-entry. That's one aspect of it. But, uh, you know, when 20 or 30,000 satellites will be launched, there'll be a lot of requirement to track these debris. And uh, an upcoming field for this is called the Space Situational Awareness. And uh, there are a few startups uh, that are actually working on, on such technologies. Uh, right. There's one young startup called Digantra uh, Aerospace Technologies from Bangalore, hmm. which is looking at, uh, you know, building a, a space-based uh, uh, system for uh, detection of uh, space debris. Right. And time has now come to meet our third startup of the day. We're talking about Bellatrix Aerospace, uh, founded in 2015 uh, by a bunch of young uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, they work on propulsion systems and they use water as one of the key ingredients. We'll find out how that works. Uh, they're also working uh, closely with ISRO. They got a big break from there. Let's first take a look. A group of young, bright and ambitious team oozing with ideas and confidence. Complex matters like oscilloscope, measuring analog signals, propulsion drawing boards, etc. means scientists are at work. Walk into Bellatrix Aerospace at Maleshwaram in Bengaluru and a sense of positivity fills in and gives an impression that this is an extension of college campus, filled with laughter, giggles and a lot of ideas on space technology. Rohan Ganpati and Yashas Karnam are co-founders of Bellatrix. It's a dream. So it's a dream of at, up to, I mean, I, I would say at least a thousand years. Mm. So uh, we are all futurists. I'm so fascinated about the future, how future would look like. Mm. So I just want to see our company surviving even in that, uh, say, thousand years from now as one of the most advanced propulsion companies. So it's a dream, it's a passion. It's very futuristic, I would say. Just as cars need engines to move, satellites need propulsion systems to reach their dedicated orbits and to stay in these orbits by maintaining proper orientation. A startup in propulsion was unheard of. When Rohan Ganpati as a student presented the paper on microwave plasma propulsion in 2012, it was seen as just a theoretical concept. But the co-founders took efforts to convince the then ISRO chairman, Kiran Kumar, who responded and placed an order for ISRO. Rohan Ganpati, an engineering graduate from Coimbatore Hindustan College, gathered like-minded classmates and juniors, Rajesh, Vivek, Sagar, Yashas, a family friend from Mysuru, to set up a startup from the idea incubated at the National Institute of Science. And it took off in 2015 with a grant of 20 lakh rupees from GSW Steel. Initially, it was a struggle, both financially and physically. And for a few months, the team worked without any monetary benefits or pay. Rohan kept the team spirit alive with his leadership. Bellatrix has proved that for working in niche technologies, in India, there is a whole support system in It is just that you, know, you have to have a focus and mind to work towards it. We are working and we are making product and we are testing the results. Ko share kar rahe Rohan Ganpati dreams that ideas like Bellatrix Aerospace have power to convert science fiction into reality and interplanetary missions will one day buzz with human life. They are often compared to SpaceX, but they prefer to be desi giants in rocket technology. Bellatrix is also working on Chetak, 
a two-stage launch vehicle with a reusable first stage. Both stages of Chetak, planned for a 2023 launch, will use liquid methane, a cleaner fuel. Rohan and Yashas, with their innovative ideas, hope to put India in an orbit of innovative propulsions, low and clean energy and make in India. Former President Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam gave a clarion call for ignited minds, which perhaps resulted in young entrepreneurs coming forward. And that is the result we see in the success story of a startup like Bellatrix. The journey of uh, Bellatrix Aerospace. And uh, one of the founders, Yashash Karnam, continues to be with us. Yashash, uh, first, water as a fuel, water as a propellant, how does that work? Well, uh, it's interesting. So we uh, drink water every day. It's very yes. surprising that w water can also fuel satellites. And right? use very it's expensive fuel, you know. In, in, yeah, uh, in, exactly. In, in place of very expensive yeah. fuel. Uh, one of the things uh, that uh, we started out, I think uh, Rohan and the initial team that we uh, started out with. So we started looking at uh, different ways to cut down the cost of satellites because uh, end of the day, it is uh, rural population and uh, lots of cities that needs to be connected. So we can't spend a lot on space technology. We have to come up with new disruptive ways that can cut down the cost. So one of the systems that uh, kind of determines this and determines uh, satellite missions capabilities is the propulsion system. It kind of in that way forms heart of a satellite right. and its capabilities. So by using water as fuel, uh, we are able to uh, come up with a very affordable technology and also a very efficient and safe technology, mm. which could uh, kind of potentially uh, put India in the global map in terms of being more competitive, uh, in terms of cost, in terms of technology. So we started out with that and very fortunately, ISRO uh, kind of gave us a very special uh, one-of-a-kind developmental contract where uh, we successfully developed and delivered such a system to ISRO. And I think uh, throughout this journey, we are very, very thankful to ISRO for uh, having been a very good mentor. And we learned a lot about space technology. So it's not a as easy as you build stuff in the lab. A uh, lot of processes are going to building something for space. And I think uh, working with ISRO scientists really helped us there. So why don't we just hear from uh, ISRO chairman himself what the journey has been uh, like. Dr. Sivan, uh, if you can come to you, sir. Uh, all the startups here speak, uh, you know, uh, the perspective. They're all students of ISRO in, any, in some manner, and now they're engaging uh, with you professionally. How do you, sir, uh, look at the journey of Bellatrix in particular? Uh, definitely that uh, they selected uh, yeah, one very, very important uh, technology we are thinking in the team process. First of all, we need a green propulsion. That is number one. Hmm. And all our uh, propulsion system right now is being used as very, very poisonous, it's hazardous. But we wanted a uh, very, very green propulsion. I am very happy that, uh, that the Bellatrix is coming with a very innovative idea of using the water as a uh, propellant. And this is what I am telling is a disruption. We should be that, uh, we should take this uh, research forward and uh, show to the world we are number one. And uh, having seen that their uh, potential, and uh, the ISRO wanted to encourage them, mm. and uh, we had uh, interactions, and uh, we have discussed with our uh, technical expertise, and I, I, we, we, we wanted to continue this uh, discussion, and I want him to encourage, and he should come very fast. Yep, yeah, 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 yeah. Water-based rocket. That, that is a, that will be the real disruption in the world. So that will make India as a global power cause, I am telling you. And also there is a, that this idea, I would say that, uh, this, his the idea of that, a small rocket that Bellatrix had, that I would, uh, first of all, I must thank him. This, I, when they produced this idea of the small satellite launch vehicle, that uh, a small, uh, that the Chetha, at that time I was a director of uh, VSSC, that triggered in our mind to develop our SSLV, what we are talking. So that way I must thank them that really they, they, they triggered that idea of uh, this one. And uh, definitely that uh, the, the technology and the disruptions, whatever they are uh, the planning is, it is going to take us in many, the, the long way. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that with the type of enthusiasm that the Bellatrix, uh, the engineers have, I'm sure that we will be able to achieve that, uh, uh, that very soon the disruption and I wish that 
uh, he has to come forward and discuss and work with the uh, ISRO so ensure right. that yeah, yeah, that a yeah, major disruption is happening in the world. That's why I, I, I wish them all the best. Right. Wonderful Thanks words of encouragement from the mentor. Uh, Yashash, what would you say? Thanks a lot, sir. It's indeed very, very humble of you to speak uh, good about us. And uh, it really made our day to hear that uh, the idea of Chetak also, uh, somehow you could uh, stumble upon it when you were the director at VSSC. Uh, really a great moment and uh, definitely, as you advised, we will definitely write to you. And in fact, uh, through this stage, I would like to request your appointment as well to come and uh, just discuss about our future plans and. Uh, request your uh, guidance and support going forward, sir. Wonderful. So, Yash is going forward with his professional engagements, also booking his appointment. So, uh, as we are moving towards the conclusion of the program, uh, let's now gather some final comments. Uh, Dr. Sivan, uh, your final thoughts, sir. You've been very, very generous uh, as a mentor in the program today, opening up doors of opportunity for our startups. But one final word, not just for the startups present in the studio, but all the youngsters, young entrepreneurs watching this program, uh, especially in the space sector, what would you say for the road ahead, sir? I would, I would like to take that uh, only one point. Definitely, that uh, this uh, uh, when they are, uh, the startup is uh, doing this activity, definitely they have to face some challenges, and uh, they are uh, that high high risk uh, we are involved, and uh, then the, their safety and security is involved then high investment, strict policies, and government responsibilities for international obligations. Understanding these challenges, definitely government of India and ISRO take all the steps to mitigate the risk and ensure a conducive environment, environment for the startups to carry out the space activities. We are offering technical expertise, allowing the startups to use ISRO's facility, allowing them to build their own facilities within the premises of ISRO. Right. Policies are being formulated to enable startups to do business and a single window system in space is uh, realized to authorize the, the space activity. The, right. uh, the situation is very, very conducive for the uh, startups to carry out the space activity. I want all these startups, please come forward. Please be crazy. Please be innovative. Disruptive, so that it makes the entire uh, program uh, the space activities like any other terrestrial activities in the world. That's all I want to request. We are there to help you. Please give your mind, your brain to us, and we are uh, there to help you. That's all I would request the, all the interest. Right, wonderful. Dr. Sivan, a big round of applause for our mentor. Thanks very much, sir. All right, and as we conclude, let's get the final word of wisdom from our startups as well. One by one, each one of you, in very brief, uh, the crux of what you learned in your startup journey, if you could share with our audiences and the viewers. Yeah. I'll begin with you. Yeah. So the first, in fact, the greatest learning uh, and mm -hmm. also the greatest inspiring uh, uh, you know, thought is that never, uh, you know, always we should focus on very large vision, you know, so always put your time uh, to something extremely big, you know, whether you'll be able to achieve it or not. I think all the energy should go on very large vision, you know, and, and, and also striking the next big thing, you know. So that is what, uh, in fact, I've learned and also like, uh, uh, like would like to uh, tell all future entrepreneurs, always hit the big thing, always focus on the next big thing. Okay, Sanjay. Uh, impossible is nothing. I think you need to stick along. Uh, there will be, uh, you know, you might fail a uh, hundred times, but uh, you will know uh, what are the hundred ways in which uh, you you cannot get things right? And uh, you know these lessons uh, go a really long way because uh, you can uh, apply these not just for your business but also in your da daily life. So those are important, crucial words. Yashash, your final thoughts yeah. about your journey. I think over time today, I would say uh, India is every day losing opportunity by not trying really because uh, these kinds of technologies are definitely tough. But uh, India, which could uh, disrupt in everywhere, becoming a software giant, I think in hardware, if we put our minds when uh, people from India are settling abroad and right. building space right. technologies there, I think in India we can uh, really be a very big power. Right, wonderful industry. words of wisdom uh, from the young startups. A big hand for them and big hand for. Uh, Dr. Sivan, uh, once again, thank you, Dr. Sivan, for joining us in the program. Inspiring presence uh, you had, and you really opened up many gates in the minds of uh, startups present here and watching this program. Thank you, Dr. Sivan. 
And uh, with that, uh, we also come towards the conclusion of the special edition of Startup Champions. Before I close, just an important uh, information about the impact that our program is already having. Recently, DD News covered the Startup Award winners and we were one among them. We had been to Delhi, uh, the DD News did a fantastic program uh, covering the uh, Startup winners. Due to this program, uh, we have got uh, calls from several investors across the globe, not only from our country, across the globe. Not only investors, even we have got a lot of partnership inquiries and people have called us uh, asking us uh, to give franchises across the country and uh, we have even received calls from uh, you know, United States and uh, United Kingdom and UAE to give uh, franchises of uh, Organic Mandia. Organic Mandia is doing is very very interesting where one lakh uh, for a one acre uh, project to lure the people who migrated from uh, Mandia as well as who returned back during this crisis to bring into agriculture. It's a fantastic project. I was telling him about in Carbon Master, we are creating micro entrepreneurs where uh, in Kolar, um, a micro entrepreneur take our organic fertilizer and selling it to the farmers. So I was kind of telling him that let's make collaboration around this as well so that the organic fertilizer of Farmer Masters can be sold to the farmers of Organic Mandia through these micro entrepreneurs. And that brings us to the close of this uh, edition of Startup Champions. This journey will continue in our next program. We'll bring some more young, energetic and successful startups to talk to you and look at their journey. We'll take your leave for now. Namaskar.